I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to be answering a question that came up where someone was concerned that they wouldn't be able to use credit cards when traveling in Nicaragua. So this is a great question because, of course, it's something that you need to think about and be prepared for. So we're going to answer that and talk about some comments that came up or concerns or other channels and information that's been out there or misinformation, as the case may be. And we're going to talk about all of that right after the bump. I'm super frustrated on today's show because I think I did a great job recording and it just looked good. It sounded good. The whole thing was spot on this morning. Recorded this entire episode, was ready to edit it and get it uploaded and found that the audio had completely failed on the GoPro 9. So very bummed about that. So this is me completely recording the show again, trying to remember what I've already said and what I haven't. This is actually one of those things that's really hard for me. I'm not good at recording a show twice. I normally do it all in a single take or at least a single shot, like I break it up. But so so we're going to try to cover all the things. Now, what was asked of me is one of my viewers said, well, I was watching another show and someone said that they came to Nicaragua and they found that credit cards were unavailable to be used here, American credit cards specifically, because you were not able to do any bank transactions or credit card transactions with the United States because Nicaragua is under an embargo. This is, or under sanctions more, more accurately. This is absolutely completely false. Whoever made this YouTube video falsified that information entirely. I would assume they probably never came to Nicaragua at all because once you're going to falsify to that degree, there's no reason to have even actually traveled to the country. If they did, it's weird that they would put in the effort of actually going to the country and then say things that are so demonstrably false, as easy as they are. Just as a quick reference, I use a credit card and a debit card every day living here in the country. There's absolutely no problem using them. So we're gonna talk about what is available, what isn't, how it works, and what may be going on behind the scenes for some people, because multiple people have had comments about this in the last few days. So here we go. So the first, just to answer the question, are American, Canadian, Western European, the majority of the world's credit cards available to be used here in Nicaragua? Yes. Do we recommend that you use credit cards under many different circumstances. Yes, it is normal to use credit cards as a tourist. I'd actually recommend it a lot because in many cases, it just helps you keep track of your expenses, push those things off and allows you to carry less cash, which is just good for general safety, not just your safety in the moment that it's harder to lose the money you have, but also the fewer people carry lots of cash around, the less likely there are to be muggers or other uh, criminals who are looking to pickpocket you or whatever, because it just isn't worth it as much. Once people have lots and lots of cash on them, it's more likely to have pickpockets. This is the main reason why the United States has essentially no pickpockets. There's nothing in people's pockets to pick. That's an amazing tool for getting rid of that kind of crime. It'll always happen a little bit. There's always some amount of risk, but the U.S. has gotten really smart about that. Use credit cards for everything and make the credit cards all but, but useless if stolen. Pretty quickly, it makes that type of crime worthless. So here in Nicaragua, Visa is taken basically everywhere. This is the main one. MasterCard taken basically all the same places. These are the big ones. But you may be surprised. American Express is accepted essentially everywhere, as is Discover. So those big four, you may find that some others get used. Diners Club, I believe, uses the MasterCard network. I'm not completely sure. Of those, all four are just available everywhere. I know of almost no place that has ever not taken them. And even the places that you think might be less likely to take them, like Petito's Jaw, where they have big online processing of their own rather than using the standard bank processing, they still take them too. So you're really well covered. As always, I recommend if you're traveling that you come with multiple cards. This is just a good practice, it has nothing to do with Nicaragua or any particular place. Even if you're just traveling around your own country, you're an American, you're heading out to Kansas for the weekend to see the beautiful I don't know, corn or whatever. And so you're going out. It's best to have multiple credit cards. You never know when one of them is going to have a problem. They can have technical difficulties. You could have not paid your bill by accident, anything like that. It's good to have an extra card just so you have some protection. When you're traveling internationally, up that by 20 or 30 times. The importance of having access to your money is pretty high. You don't want to be in a situation where you just can't get money and having a few different cards is highly recommended. This is just general traveler's advice. And I talk about it a bit on my credit card recommendations show that I did several months ago, maybe six months ago. Those cards have worked out great, by the way. Um, we're going to talk more about them in a few months. When we do another show about those, but 
I highly recommend that you have a variety of cards, a Visa, a MasterCard, an American Express, and if possible, a Discover. Four different credit cards is definitely the way to go if you can do it. I understand not everybody can just snap their fingers and get another credit card, but if you can come up with four cards, that's really good for debit. I'm not saying use them all the time. I'm saying have them at the ready, pick the one that makes the most sense for you, but have emergency backup cards. And those are credit cards. Same thing with debit cards. I like to have two debit cards. I have one from a credit union, one from a, na a big national bank, and that gives me a lot of safety that if I have a problem with my bank or its networks that it uses at an ATM, I have the other to fall back to. So I have a lot of comfort with those. And then of course my wife carries copies of all those cards. So between us, we have a lot of options just in case, in case a card gets damaged, card gets stolen, bank account has a problem, whatever it is, we have a lot of redundancy and when traveling internationally or when relocating, you really want to have some protection against those things. Because if you have to have another card sent to you from abroad, it can be a huge hassle. And as you go longer and longer without access to money, the harder it becomes because your cash reserves or whatever start to dwindle. Now, of course, not every business is going to take credit cards. This is just obvious, right? But if you're getting a lot of street food, they're not going to take cards, especially the asado places, the little barbecue places on the side of the road, expect you're going to have to pay cash. Or if you're just going to a little a little table where they're selling fritanga, they're selling uh, juices, those kinds of things, it's going to be cash only. Some of the, the street carts are actually starting to put in credit cards just because they want to be able to capture that additional audience. Oh, you're out, you're drunk, you're not carrying cash, but you still want to get three hamburgers? You bet, right? It only takes one or two customers doing that to really significantly increase their total volume. So it makes a lot of sense that they'd want to start putting in credit cards, especially places that are near to tourist areas. And you may have drunk backpackers who are really hungry in the middle of the night. Those are good audiences to have for a restaurant. So credit cards make that easier because not everyone has cash and not everyone has local cash. And not everyone realizes, you know, they're going to be really cautious. Well, I'm just going to take some fries. I don't have a lot of spare money. You have a credit card and you're hungry. You're just like, give me a burger, give me fries, give me a second burger, put fries on that burger, right? You're just going to keep buying things because you're hungry. And when you have a credit card, Card, it empowers you to buy a lot more. So it's smart for those businesses. Now, that said, I do use credit cards whenever possible. When I'm going out or whatever, I don't want to be carrying cash for reasons that I said. Also, I find it very inconvenient to go out and get, and get cash all the time. Plus, when I'm getting cash, there are ATM fees and such things. Those are things I don't have to deal with if I'm using my credit card. So if I'm going to a restaurant or whatever, I like to use credit cards if they allow. If they don't or if there's a charge for it, fine. I go to cash. But if I can use a credit card, I do opt for that. It gives me just a lot of peace of mind. It makes things a lot easier and I don't have to deal with cash as often. Also, also I tend to get better conversions uh, and fewer overhead things and many cards give you cash back. If yours doesn't, look into finding one that does. That could change your life a little bit. Um, I had that whole episode where I talked about that. I've been very careful to have really good traveler's cards. International traveler's cards are one of the secrets to not making your cards work. Normal cards are gonna work, but having international ones that give you good benefits means no transaction fees that you're going to get cash back or some kind of points or whatever on all your different transactions. And those things really do add up and make a big difference over time. So I recommend that a lot. It's one of the reasons that I use the cards I do and why I'm able to rely on them so heavily. They make my life much easier. If I'm using my debit card for things, often there's an international transaction fee. That is a big overhead that's not worth it. It's worth having a credit card for that reason alone, plus any emergencies that may arise, and plus some credit cards have built-in insurance, all kinds of things. That's not gonna matter for a meal, but for a lot of things it may make a big difference. And for those of you who are traveling without healthcare insurance, often your credit card acts as your insurance that yes, you still have to pay it back, but your ability to walk into a private hospital and say, I want this done or that done. You're putting down a credit card and they're like, yeah, what do you want? We're just going to do it, right? It's a completely different experience when you have access to those financial resources. They're not going to ask you questions because they know your card is good. So there's a lot of reasons that you want to have those cards. Now, if you are traveling and you have problems with your cards, this does come up. But it's important to note that the people who are claiming that this means that the national infrastructure doesn't work, that cards are not accepted in the country, or that they're under some kind of sanctions that's stopping them, that's really nonsensical. If you have a credit card and you live in the United States and you're traveling around the United States and one day it doesn't work, you're generally pretty accepting that maybe you didn't pay your bill. Let's be honest. I just a few weeks ago went to use my American Express somewhere and it got denied. I did not then claim that Guatemala was under sanctions or that they didn't accept credit cards in the country, that the whole country's banking infrastructure has failed. I opened up my Amex app and realized I was a few days late on my payment, paid it, waited a few hours, and my card was back on, completely on me. But if I didn't know how to use an app, if I didn't understand how cards work, it wouldn't take too much for me to just start hypothesizing and telling people any wild story 
if I was willing to be a little bit less than honest about it. But you can see how people who may travel simply don't tell their uh, credit card company that they're traveling, so they get shut off for fraud protection. That's a really common thing. Make sure you're talking to your credit card company. Maybe they're using a card on a network that isn't supported. Uh, that's rare down here. We're on most of the same networks as the United States, but there's always that possibility. And when I'm traveling in the U.S., sometimes it happens there with my U.S. cards, right? You're just, oh, this is just a bank ATM that's, uh, you know, on a different network. Or maybe my bank, or maybe the ATM is just down. I had that happen here in Nicaragua just this week. I went to use the ATM. The ATM ATM said my bank didn't have the funds. I just moved to the ATM in this, the, another ATM in the same room from the same bank, put my card in there and it gave me the money, no problem. It was having technical difficulties. So if you're using cards, it's very important that you understand how cards work a little bit, have a little bit of common sense, don't make things up, all that's super true, but be aware that when you're traveling internationally, you're more likely to run into problems that the bank isn't carrying your currency, that there's a currency conversion on, potentially on top of normal transactions that you have to do, that there are fewer interconnected banking network. So depending on what bank you use, that may cause uh, some just some communications problems. I do find that one of my debit cards uh, doesn't function maybe 10% of the time on any given ATM. My other one functions maybe only only fails about 5% of the time. It's noticeably that, noticeable that one is a little bit more fragile, let's say, than the other. They both work most of the time, and I can always use one or the other or find another ATM. But if I'm looking for that utmost in reliability, yeah, one of mine is less reliable. My main one is less reliable than the other. That's just how it is. And when you're international, there's so many more moving pieces that the chances that something will fail is higher. And of course, as you go to restaurants, they have to have a, a reader from uh, one of the banks. Now here, there's only about six banks. So we have very standard acceptance across the country. That's why I can tell you in most places, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover are just universally accepted because it's only a handful of banks and everybody's processing through the same ones and they all accept all those cards. So actually, I believe we have a deeper acceptance rate of those standard cards across the Nicaragua than you do in the U.S., where it's much more often that you will find some places that only take American Express or only take Visa or MasterCard. The big exception here, as well as in the United States, is you sometimes can use only American Express at Pricemart or Costco, as you know it, uh, because they have a special deal with American Express and they don't take anything else. That's unique, and they're processing it themselves. Everyone else takes everything. So, and they're, they are present themselves as cash only, and the American Express is a specialty thing. And I think it has to be their American Express. I don't even think you can use mine, right? So, I don't even know. I don't try. That's that's really important to understand that, yeah, they're going to fail. And my understanding is some people will try to use a credit card in an ATM, and that's even more touchy. There's a lot of situations where that doesn't work, so just be aware. So this first question came up because someone made the claim that they traveled in Nicaragua, and they claimed that the reason their cards didn't work if that was even true, was that there were sanctions. So obviously we know from observation, we use our credit cards every day. I've used mine today. There's no sanctions, not like that. There's You're able to use your credit cards completely freely. There's open banking between Nicaragua and the United States. They are partners in the uh, banking industry, along with many, most of the countries of the world, to retain transparency and easy access to money because that's what makes the economies work. If the U.S. stopped doing banking with other countries, it would severely hamper its position in the world economy. So they're not likely to do that. It's not the kind of thing they would want to do. Even the strongest sanctions that people have rumored don't even begin to talk about things like that happening at all. This is a crazy level of claim to sanctions. It's not even in the proposed crazy list of sanctions. Uh, and so, and there are no sanctions on Nicaragua right now. There is the really rare things on U.S. citizens, like U.S. citizens are not allowed to invest in the gold industry. It's a very specific thing and is not a national level sanction or anything of the sort. So those things completely false. It's And it's so demonstrable. Everyone we know uses credit cards every single day. However, there are situations that will arise where people can't use credit cards. A good friend of mine was just traveling to Nicaragua, coming from Canada, and while passing through the United States, she was unable to use her credit cards, any of them, while in the Houston airport. She talked to people in the airport and they said, yeah, they actively do not accept Canadian credit cards, even though they're on a network and are supposed to be taking them under the terms of the uh, MasterCard or Visa agreements that they have. They just don't accept international cards. That's an entire U.S. airport, a really major interchange location, and every business in the airport operates under a single umbrella. They all do one thing of processing, and they don't take foreign cards. By the logic used here in Nicaragua, because that one company decided to do something kind of sketchy, you could make the claim that the United States has put an embargo or a sanctions on Canada 
Canada and no longer has open banking with Canada and that Canadian cards don't work in the United States. But millions and millions of Canadians who use their credit cards in the United States every day will tell you you're absolutely crazy and the lack of any sanctions will demonstrate that that is completely false. Same thing here. One person may, if they even did it uh, in reality or just made it up, right? falsified information about credit cards, nothing of the sort is real. You can use and you are recommended to use your credit cards heavily. And if you watch my videos about how do you get cash, I say all the time, under normal circumstances, just use the ATMs. How do they think we're doing all that if you can't use your cards? Of course you can. Now we had a follow-up uh, uh, note on my channel from someone, because we did post a little bit of real quick information in the shorts about this, and they said that my information was not entirely correct because they came down and couldn't use their credit card. It, really important to understand, that's exactly what we're saying. Just because the country accepts cards and your card network is accepted and there's no sanctions, doesn't mean your account is paid up. It doesn't mean that you're on every network. It doesn't mean that your bank is functioning at that moment. There's a million things. Just because your card fails does not imply any of the other things are not true. That's, that's like saying, you know, the highway's open and you're saying, well, no, it's not because my car's broken. What? That's, what? But that's what, pe people really say this stuff. So <laughs> be aware. And even in the example that she gave, she explained that what I said was true because she said she came down with her sister and her sister used her credit card. It was a Visa instead of a MasterCard. She said, thankfully, her sister's card worked and they were able to pay for everything with that, which demonstrates exactly what I was saying, that definitely there aren't the sanctions, that proves it again, and that credit cards work, proves it again. That she had one credit card, and in the whatever circumstance she tried to use it, it didn't work. We don't know why it didn't work. Did she get caught for coming to Nicaragua and the fraud prevention from her bank? cut her off. She may have had to make a call and let them know or answer a text. Sometimes I don't see the text when they ask me those things and they cut off my card. Maybe she didn't pay the bill. I didn't. I did it. So, you know, maybe that's it. Just had to pay that. Maybe she's on a network that isn't supported here. Maybe the one time she tried to use it, I don't know how many times she tried to use it, but maybe just the card reader was down or her bank was possibly down. That happens all the time. And the one thing she mentions is she tried to get cash, but mentioned having a credit card. Lots of places, a lot of ATMs won't give cash on a credit card. A lot of networks won't give cash on a credit card. Some banks won't give you cash internationally on a credit card. So she may not have even tried to use it as a credit card. She may have tried to as use it as something that you never would do at home and then cause problems. You don't, under normal circumstances, it's truly an emergency situation that you take cash advances from a credit card. So trying to do that while internationally, one would hope it'd be the only time you've ever tried to do that in your life and you're testing something you've probably not tested at home. And most people don't know how to take take out cash from their credit card when, when doing anything. It's just not a normal action. So often that's a one-off. Now, we don't know what her situation is, but what we do know is that in her own description, she proved, if what she was saying was true, that my statements were correct. No sanctions, definitely take credit cards. So, uh, of course, things will be fragile when you're traveling, have redundancy, think critically, but use credit cards. And yes, when coming to Nicaragua, use your credit cards. They make sense in so many situations. So I apologize that I had to re-record this again. I hope this one turned out nearly as good as the first one. You can imagine how good it might have been. And uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. Help support everything we do here from buying cameras, newer ones that actually have working microphones and uh, editing equipment and all the software and stuff that we need to be able to make this show, plus the cost of traveling around to different places, which we haven't done a ton of recently. It's going to be a lot more coming up soon. I I promise we're working really hard on doing some really cool things. I just found out I'm going to be on television again in about a month. So that should be cool as well. I know a lot of you watched when I was on TV last year, trying to do that same thing again. So I really appreciate everyone who helps support the channel. As always, like, subscribe, post on social media, tell a friend, family member about the show, get someone addicted. It is interesting. We do have a lot of information. Get down in the comments, ask your own questions, leave your own comments. How many of you have used credit cards when you're traveling around the world? Most, I assume. It's the normal thing to do. Uh, tons of people I know are like, because I've talked to people today, and they're like, um, I use my credit card every day. What are you talking about? And, uh, yeah, but we always love the comments. And I need people to make video comments and send them in. I'm waiting for people to do that. I will see all of you tomorrow. And one last favor, if you could click on one of these videos, either that's coming up on the screen now or go to the side or scroll somewhere and click on another one of my videos. This tells the algorithm that you love the show.